Yep. And another guy like that is his uh, fellow countryman, Minwoo Lee, who began his day in unbelievable fashion, hole out from the fairway on number one for Eagle to, you know, push himself right up there towards the top of the leaderboard. Uh, he was hanging around Scheffler's rear few. He was four under through his first six holes, grabbed the lead at 11 uh, with a birdie after hitting it left into the bunker, laid up, made birdie the old conventional way for him, added another uh, and was 13 under, one ahead of Scheffler. And this is a guy, if you're not paying too close attention to the world of golf, who's kind of just been eating it up on the DP World Tour. He's been playing some great golf out there. Eight top 13 finishes in his last 10 worldwide starts. Finished uh, runner-up at Abu Dhabi. He took down Matt Fitzpatrick and Thomas Dietrich at the Scottish Open in 2021 in a playoff. Uh, and you'll hear it a lot. You know, His sister, Minji top five player in the world, U S open champion. He might not even be the best Lee in the household, all this, but I was wildly impressed with his play. Uh, he, he had a bit of swagger to him with the shades, the long hair, the stash, the, the swing speed. Uh, so what was your takeaway from Minwoo's round today? I'm going to tell him the stash has got to go. <laughs> that the, the <laughs> doesn't work, but what works? I mean, this boy flushes Minwoo hits it. Uh, and, and he's powerful. I don't think people realize how long he can hit it. And and he's got a whole lot of self-belief about him. But, you know, when you're playing with Minji as an older sister and she's winning everything, I think you're kind of okay with chasing people down. And you're up for a battle all of the time. And, and all of those victories he's had, like that Scottish Open, he birdied the last, if memory serves me. And you know, the weather was horrid. I mean, it was blustery and cold. And he smashed the seven iron in there to a few feet and made the closing birdie to win. And it was one of those, he hit the thing and he started walking instantaneously. Now, now I want you to imagine, remember um, Harding Park, President's Cup, Tiger was like four iron from the rough final hole, hit that four iron and he gave it that fancy club twirl, right? And he started walking, mm -hmm. stiffed it and they made Eagle to win the match. It was that sort of thing. And that's who Minwoo is. And he's not afraid of anybody. He can really go, and I think the closing bogey today will, would uh, that stings. But he's the kind of guy he's going to be like, ah, oh, no stress, no stress, mate. He goes, we go and get him tomorrow. He's that sort of a guy, and and so I would not be surprised whatsoever if he hangs around and really pushes on Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, I, I think he'll do a good job keeping pace with him. Uh, but Scheffler's a tough cookie to crack. We have seen yeah. kind of some some cracks in his armor over this past year. You think about the Charles Schwab challenge. Uh, you think about the Tour Championship as well with 54 hole leads. And Minwoo will have a chance, you would think, down the stretch if he plays in you know a similar fashion tomorrow. But the way Scotty Scheffler played today and is playing this week is out of this world. He's about two strokes better from tee to green than the guy in second, Gary Woodland, per round, uh, which is just out of this world. And it, it really kind of came to life early in his round. He hit his approach on one to tap in distance, chipped in for Eagle on two to take the lead, and you know instantly became the odds-on favorite. He added another birdie there and then hit, hit it out of, or uh, in the water on seven. And it was, a, it was a pretty big moment in his round, I think. It, it felt like a double bogey could have happened, but he nearly saved par, hit his mm -hmm. third shot to 15 feet, almost charred it, and then goes birdie at eight, which is not an easy hole, uh, birdie at nine, and then kind of cruised along to that, you know, during the middle part of his back nine where he could have maybe added a birdie on uh, 11, had a really nice up and down there on 10, 12, the drivable par four he didn't take advantage of. But like you said, kept his cool, level-headed, nothing's going to bother this guy, and then boom, birdie on 16 and a closing birdie on 18, and you look up and all of a sudden, Scotty Scheffler's got a two-stroke lead with 18 holes to play. Yeah, um, if well, I'm not allowed to bet, but if I was a betting man, um, with the fact that the golf course is remaining softish, I'm expecting the rules staff are going to have those sub-air systems cranking tonight, and they're going to do everything to suck the moisture out of this golf course, especially the greens. But with the golf course, the fairways were really soft today with all because they took a half an inch or so of rain last night. I mean, the heavens open for a few hours. Um, with the golf course playing soft, I feel like it makes a real disaster for Scotty Scheffler less likely because when fairways are soft, they play wider. When greens are soft, they play wider. And the way he's striking the golf ball, I don't see him hitting some sort of sats here that's going to cause a big number. So in other words, 
if he's going to make a mistake, it's likely going to be a bogey or two. And with him with a two-stroke lead, I think he shot like 68 and 69, right? And 65 today. I think I might be wrong. But it, that 68 he shot in round one when we had every shot, it looked like that was the most he could have shot. So let's mm-hmm. just go with that and say, okay, the golf course is playing easier. If Scotty gets out there and shoots 69 tomorrow, that means Min Wu has to shoot 67 or better, or 67 to tie him, better to beat him. And that is a big ask when you're playing in the final group at the Players' Championship. So right now, I think the softer conditions, if they remain soft, um, play right into his favor. What might be a negative is apparently the wind is a bit more gusty tomorrow. It's from a different direction. And gusty breezes for these guys are kind of hard. You know, I was talking about the predictability or the ability to predict. You know, when you're standing there in the fairway and you're like playing 175 into a, a consistent right to left breeze, you can make the call, right? But if it's in and out and you might hit and the wind dies and you're over the back of the green in the water, well, that you cannot predict. If it is gusty tomorrow, that may be an equalizer too. But the one thing about this guy, this is my final point is he is now a big game hunter and he knows how to win mm. big tournaments and he survived the masters his first win and he did so scrambling he showed he could scramble and win so if the golf swing does let him down some he we know he can scramble he's fantastic his hands are gold around the green so i think it's going to take something unlikely for him to be unseated tomorrow i really do yeah, so if he goes on to win, he will join two other men to hold the Players' Championship and the Masters at the same time. Mark, can you name them? Tiger Woods, probably. Yeah, he is one yeah. of them. Uh, Rory hasn't won the Masters. Um, Sandy Lyle. Mm. Who's the guy who has more majors than Tiger? Jack Nicholas. Goodness. Well, how could I, I, I thought I was being smart with my Sandy Lyle guess because Sandy Lyle has won both of these. I guess not at the it, same time. It, it, was, it was a layup. It was an absolute layup. You kind of missed I'm it. I'm buggered. I'm buggered. Pull out. Yeah. You play golf.